So blind bands real quickly. We have Dark Liddy and Fade being taken care of by Pikachu. And Tundra and Ophelia coming out for 15. Now, again, a quick note on rosters. You mentioned Pro Bus taking the place of Nier here yep. for Pikachu. Now, th there has been some, some words out there, that some rumors even, if you want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, both Swinomelons and Z Freak are kind of going off and doing their own thing. I think even in the Vanguard tournament that happened this last week, and they actually signed up. Uh, with their own team, not with Pikachu. So they are going to be right. finishing this event, though, with Pikachu. But it seems like that after this event, this team is going to be no longer at least this five-man roster here. It seems that way, and we'll get more to that if we have time. It seems like the logs are going so fast, but yeah, they are forming uh, what seems to be their own teams. Still, so lots of shuffling going around in the scene. But anyway, back to this game. The uh, the blind bands have finished. The ban or the sorry, the locks are Bubbles, Feral Plague Rider, Pebbles, Lord Salferis. And then Tempest is that final lock coming up from 15. And then the bands right away. We got Mage Bane, Demented <coughs> Shaman. Demented Shaman seems to be a ban uh, quite frequently used against Swindle Melons. He yeah. particularly loves that in that solo role. I do myself. Uh, Nymphora and then Draconis is banned. So still one more really you know hard carry when you think of the the, the fearsome foursome. I want to say I'm going to call it that. <laughs> fearsome now. four. The fearsome foursome. Uh, the, the fearsome the foursome even. All right. I like that. <laughs> All right. Fearsome four. All right. <laughs> no. Mage Bane, Draconis, Dark Lady, Silhouette. Those are the fearsome four, in my opinion. Yeah. Silhouette's still there. And then the final band being, or final two bands, I should say, Aluna and Keeper of the Forest. So most of those junglers are kind of either banned or locked. We do have Tempest um, available in Lockpool as well as Parasite, which we don't see too often, but still available as well. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, this we are flying we really through are. this. Uh, no extra time has even been used yet. We're already at the regular picking phase. So, both teams, uh, of course, in this case, Swindle Melons for Pikachu, and then you got FedEx for the win over there. Uh, for 15, the the captains for either team, they're they're just uh, they're having a good time here and really not using any, literally no extra time just yet. So Morax is the first snap pick there from Pikachu, and that's followed up by Iglesias, Poliwag Priest, of course. And there you go, Empath Silhouette. So we are again just flying through this phase here. Both teams pretty confident apparently in what they ultimately want to run here when it comes to this game. I and mean, we really haven't even had a chance to address the lock pool just yet. I mean, when you do look at it, of course, South Forest maybe the one that really stands out. It's kind of more of a trollish pick as we see it from time to time but other than that I mean very very solid lock pool on top of this as well here yeah definitely I, I like how Pikachu's lineup is forming right now and in 15s it's too early to tell but but those are both solid solid choices right now they're right clicking wild soul and again I I stress this for about two months now I want yeah. to say <laughs> Uh, really, ever since I've I've come here to Honcast, but I just really think Wild Soul is a gem. I really do. You, you can run him in so many different ways. He's at suicide roll. It's it's really, arguably the strongest hero in a suicide roll because you can get massive amounts of farm on him. You can pull the lane constantly with your bear to yeah. to a safe position against one hero, against three heroes. It doesn't matter. And and even then, as a suicide hero, you can still get something like a 20 to 24 minute mock. I and mean, it's just it's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, now they're right clicking artillery there, but they're going to go with the, something more safe. They're going to go with that Forsaken Archer. Yeah, Forsaken Archer, of course, the series that we watched earlier today. Uh, for those that happen to be tuning in, of course, our first coverage of this doubleheader today was, sure enough, TT Esports versus Trademark Esports, where Trademark Esports did defeat them two games to nothing. But why am I talking about another series? Because, again, you look back at this, and all of a sudden we're done now with the picking stage. Again, we just absolutely flew through this picking stage yeah. here. When it comes down to it, I believe, so how did they even work? It was Tempest with the first lock pick. It went to Pebbles Plague Rider from 15 over here, and then Bubbles, the final pick, for Pikachu. So it's almost as if the captains were reading each other. They knew exactly what they were going to be doing. And sure enough, we, we got the countdown starting, uh, going into the game trial. So you, you're glancing now at both these teams. You, you said you liked how Pikachu was forming initially. You think they finished off strong? I do. I, I, they have a jungler. They have, they have a lot going for them. Uh, Empath Silhouette. That's a really a deadly combo. I, I talked about Empath as well for quite some time. I really love the support. Yeah. Uh, it's not so much that you know he buffs, or I should say she buffs that support a considerable amount, but it's the fact that you can have a support that is no longer susceptible to stuns or any kind of AOE or anything like that because she's hiding inside of somebody. So even like if she's hiding inside of Miraxis in a team fight, she is she, as tanky as Miraxis is. So is Empath. You know yeah. what I mean? It just works out so well. And, and their lineup, I really like, I, I expect a dual lane mid, silhouette solo bottom, but look at here, uh, Team 15, if they're smart, I think they're going to try to contest this bottom lane. Maybe something awkward like a, a, like a Plague Forsaken Archer lane, I'm not entirely sure. They're all down here to start, but there's probably going to be some switching around to go. And then Poliwog uh, up in the top lane, I actually really like the lanes coming out from 15, I really do. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they, of course, they are down here getting that ward of sight down. And you see right there, this is placed a well in the camp. Uh, so it's going to block at least the initial part. We'll see if Pikachu responds to that later on in this game. Of course, they're able to buy Revelation at the two-minute mark. And uh, we'll see where they go from there. But initially, it will be blocked. Good job from 15 coming out there. You see, really coming down here as a team to protect that. Now we'll see how it really plays out as far as how they're going to form their lanes now when it comes down to it. Uh, looks like it is going to be a Pebbles Plague Rider bottom with a Glacius Forsaken Archer middle. So, yeah, definitely some unique lanes here, specifically that bottom lane, Plague Rider Pebbles. Not a lane you would really expect. I mean, usually you 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 would see another stun to go with Pebbles, whether it's a Luna, Nymphora, Glacius. Uh, but in this case, it does happen to be Plague Rider, so they got a, they got some good slow to set up a Pebbles combination. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how well that works, and whether or not also Glacius, you know, maybe adjusts to the bottom lane, seeing that Moraxis is going to be soloing here in the middle. Tempest apparently going to be playing aggressive jungle, so a couple of interesting things to talk about here in the laning phase draft. Yeah, definitely. And Tempest is up here. She didn't deny early, but she's going to deny right here, right when the lane get, or the wave gets here, and then use those minions to just farm right up here in the jungle. Uh, interesting that they they warded that warded that pole, but still going to have Tempest up here in the jungle. Anyway, I, I actually really like the lane. So you did mention uh, it's kind of interesting having Plague Pebbles down here in the bottom. Um, the, the thing that's bad about it is they're going to be played against a double range, being both Empath and yeah. Silhouette. Now they do have the denier to work with with Plague, so that's going to be very interesting to keep our eye on. It's going to be very volatile, I feel like. Uh, but, you know, Plague, having that natural deny is going to have the lane push back at a, you know, a considerably safer position there for the Hellborn squad. But mm -hmm. then the FA versus, FA, uh, sorry, FA Glacius versus Maraxis mid, that is a strong, strong lane, FA Glacius. We've seen that time and time again. It really is one of the strongest lanes because you have the snare. You have, um, once they hit level two, you have multiple spells to be used from both Glacius and for Sick and Archer. And just the fact that they're both dual range, or they're, they're both range, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, makes it very, very strong for any kind of lane composition. Yeah, yeah, definitely very deadly. And Morax is being played by Swinomons here. You will have to be a little bit careful when it comes down to, of course, uh, dealing with this combination. I will say, you know, with that W ability, which eventually may, maybe a level three or even level four could get, that could be useful against Glacius specifically. Uh, you know, anticipating a, uh, a ice imprisonment to come out, so it can definitely prevent that from happening, as, of course, Forsaken Archer doesn't have that single target ability to uh, take care of it, nonetheless. So, anyways, uh, we'll see how Moraxis matches up here. Now, there was one thing I wanted to mention. You got TPS Priceless playing Empath here, and got to, you know, give a little bit of slap on the wrist there. He's not playing with the Lust skin, unfortunately. <laughs> we still yet get to see the Lust skin here in competitive play. Uh, on an empath hero. It's been out for a little bit now, so still waiting for the good old Lust skin to come out. But Yeah, now the um, Lust, lust uh, um, skin does have a tramp stamp, I gotta say. <laughs> yes. But this one, she's still wearing a thong. That's so. true. You know what? We can be happy with that, right, Drill? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're happy with that, I guess, in the end. Uh, yeah, so obviously having some fun there. But it looks like we are coming out of the pause now with uh, both teams apparently ready. So just a little bit of lag issues for, looks like, 15 side. But with the reconnects happening... Saying that they are ready, Swin and Mills will go ahead and unpause the game, and the game will commence. So as you talked about Tempest, he is up here at the top lane. Polywalk Priest was applying a lot of early pressure here to Bubbles in the top lane. And you see Bubbles playing fairly passive, book here on Bubbles, of course, but Polywalk Priest does need to be a little bit careful. Now, I wonder if 15 is even aware yet that Tempest is in their own jungle. I mean, they got some Ward of Sights here in the Legion jungle, and still have yet to see him, of course, so I wonder if that's even realized or if it may take a Bloodlust skill at the top lane to finally realize that. Yeah, I don't think they have an idea, really. And uh, I, I don't know. It's it's kind of an interesting way to jungle. Maybe they want to be aggressive. I, I feel like the way to do this is to be aggressive on Polly. Look at how Polly's playing. That's what I'm saying, yeah. E even if, yeah, yeah, maybe they don't know. So that's a good point. Now, he is very, very low on mana, the Tempest, that is. Uh, did get some interesting items. Normally, we see massive amounts of uh, mana potions. Like something like five, maybe even six mana mm -hmm. potions. He's going for more of a, I want to say, early uh, Ring of Sorcery build, which is okay. But, yeah, considering the lane that he is in, I feel like he could just be punishing this Polywog. We normally never see actually, some rune control coming out. The rune actually is bottom, so that's going to favor this Hellborn side. But, um, yeah, we normally see uh, Polywog in the mid lane because it's, it's very hard for her to be a side lane hero. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, I, this is what I'm talking about. I think the lane setup is actually quite good. Polywog is not the worst in the side lane. And, and look at the this. bubbles. Here we go. Tempest coming in. There's a Glacial Blast. Will Bubbles be able to follow up initially? Or eventually? Yes, he will. In comes a Shell Serving Nuka. Does hit one more auto attack. Nice health potion use, though, by FedEx for the win. The good fade to black. And in the end, he should be fine for now. Yes, he will. And he barely escapes with his life. So, yeah, very, very close with it. That's exactly what I was referring to though, earlier on. He was playing so aggressive. 
Finally, Tempest comes over and looks to set up the Bulldoze kill, but unfortunately for uh, Pikachu here, not successful. So good reaction, just enough time for Poliwag Priest to get back and survive and go all the way back to the tower now. Yeah, really good job there by FedEx with the win, using that health potion at the perfect time. Uh, but a good idea from Z Freak to go in there, and that's exactly what I have to do. Pressure the lane that's going to be the, the easiest to gank, and at the same time being close enough to the jungle to get your massive amounts of farm that Tempest should. Mm -hmm. So, um, good job by him, nonetheless. And, and look, at I, I feel like he could just go back. He doesn't have mana <laughs> yeah. though, unfortunately, and, and actually he's all out of mana potions. So that's the kind of crappy thing. Once he comes, once he's out of mana potions, he has really nothing else to do. Like yeah. after this, his conversion or his elemental spell costs 180 mana. So after these die, I, I'm kind of curious what's he going to do. Because he doesn't have a couriers in base. It, it mm -hmm. will come, I, I'm sure, very, very shortly. But uh, until then, he's kind of... He's going to go to the observatory over here. Ah, there you go. So yeah. he's going to use that to his uh, to his, as his resource. But it's still far away. Yeah. He's still wasting quite a bit of time. So this is. I feel like if Tempest, like you said, I mean, yes, he is in the opposite jungle. Yes, he could apply pressure to the top lane. But he's he did that once, but not doing it so much. Now, I feel like if he was just straight out jungling... In his own jungle, he would just be, you know, have massive amounts of farm. He actually goes for an early chalice. Uh, I actually like that. I think chalice is quite a good item. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a little bit different, but uh, Z Freak especially, he's kind of known as more of a different style of jungler compared to a lot of others out there. I mean, he has his own unique style where when it comes to item builds and whatnot. Again, that's kind of like, wh wh I'm referring to that, obviously, with the Blood Chalice pickup. That's not a usual pickup by any means on a Tempest, but as you said, it sounds like you like it. And, you know, again, remembering that it's been a little bit of, bit, bit of time now, but it did eventually get buffed to the 50% mana regeneration happening uh, on the Blood Chalice, where before it just mm -hmm. never even happened despite having the Scarab to build it. So, uh, so yeah, that's what he chooses to go with. He's going to come to the top lane here and look to set up another gank on a Poliwag Priest. But look at Poliwag. He's already reacting to it. In comes the Shell Surf, though. He felt something was up. It's going to be enough time to get away. He does have a Hex ready to go. If he finds it necessary, the final auto attack, though. Just too much damage. And down he goes. So I, mean, I know we had the Hex on off cooldown, but even if he used it, he probably still was going to fall right there. So good job finally coming out here from a Tempest in the Jungle, being played by Z Freak. And, of course, Book there on bubbles eventually comes through at the top lane. Yeah, I, I just like this because Tempest is close to Polywog. Um, you you got to punish them for putting Polywog in a lane like that. And I, I think maybe they just uh, it was just a good read by Swindle Melons, knowing that that's what they were going to do. And, uh, I mean, it, Tempest already had in mind that he was going to be in the opposite jungle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he was already up there. I feel like they just knew that the lanes were quite obvious. And uh, right now he's marching right back oh, to Polywog, and he has his elementals ready to go. And Polywog's going to be in a world of hurt. There's the stun to follow. There's the stun. There it is. One stun to follow. And actually, uh, Bubbles did not port to his shell, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. He has the Kelp Field and he does use it liberally. And yet another kill on FedEx for the win. Well, this goes to the point of, as you're just kind of addressing right there, it's almost as if Swinna Melons or Religious Pikachu as a team, they, they, they saw it coming, and they set up the lanes appropriately. But if now if you're, if you're uh, 15 here... Do you think about sending that Glacius Forsaken Archer top now and having Polywag Priest go to the middle lane? Because clearly, especially after that second death, it's going to be troublesome uh, for Polywag Priest at that top lane there. It's already too difficult. Bubbles already has massive levels. You're not going to be able to kill him with a Glacius. Um, if you send both Forsaken Archer and Glacius, I, I still feel like Bubbles could get kills on Glacius. Yeah. Um, he, he's too farmed and has too many levels at this point, so it's just, it's just crappy. It's just something you're going to have to deal with, unfortunately. Polywalk's going to have to move around because uh, he, he can't go back in this lane. He's just going to keep getting ganked and ganked over and over. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I did like the setups. I just think that... Uh, I, th I think Team Pika just one-upped him a little bit. Yeah, you can definitely say that. Now, I will say this ward spot here coming out from 15, uh, placed by Seal Kid, actually, at the, it's, uh, of course, a spot in the top rune. I will say maybe it might have made more sense to put it up more towards the jungle, but still seeing the top rune, because, again, clearly Tempest being in your jungle is causing a huge problem, really, for this top lane in Polywalk Priest. But as you said, it's just something that they kind of have to deal with now, and hopefully for Polywalk Priest's sake, you know, he's he starts to play a lot more passive than he's been playing, because, obviously, those two deaths are result of him playing somewhat aggressive in that lane, you know, whether he's not even realizing it or if just simply thinking that he can get away, but in the end just doesn't happen. So Z Freak on Tempest, of course, fantastic start for him. He is the second top farm of the game on his team, that is. Sitting at 293 gold for another top farmer, of course, is actually Bubbles. But speaking of top farmer, Forsaken Archer. So we, we talked about this, you know, whether or not they should adjust to the top lane. Well, you could argue that especially they shouldn't because it's working out so well for Flensmeister here on Forsaken Archer here in the middle lane. He is currently the top farmer of the game by quite a bit, actually, at 375 gold per minute. Now Wartrap comes down, and they take out Tempest right there. 
Obviously, Glacius, he also came in for the assistance, but uh, good job by Polywire Priest scouting out Tempest and eventually getting him killed. So a little bit of revenge there coming out for specifically uh, FedEx for the win on that Polywog. Yeah, good job. I mean, using those words liberally, using them as soon as they're basically off, off cooldown and uh, getting a good kill right there on Tempest. That's exactly what they needed to do. He, he was such a nuisance to him in that top lane. He's like, hey, I got, I got you. I got your number. And so he gets a good kill on him. Uh, other things happening in the lanes. Yeah, Forsaken Archers just massively getting uh, farm in the mid lane. Yeah. Up, up to 60 creep kills right now in eight minutes. That's just Jeez. a wonderful job. Um, in the bottom lane, I haven't looked at that too much, but actually a gank is coming out. There's the stun from Pebbles. Is the ultimate up and ready? Yes, it is. Very, very well placed. It gets a uh, playground just on the nick of it. There's the grapple to follow from Silhouette. Double kill. No, actually, the kills go to TPS prices and then Probust. So really good gank coming out from Z3. Good game so far. Yeah, double tap for the team, though, for Pikachu. And yeah, again, that was 100% Z Freak starting that, of course. But I also love the patience, specifically by Probust. He didn't just sit there right-click auto-attacking and hoping for the kills to happen. He set up the tree grapple, and he took a good two seconds or so to set up the eventual stun and as we saw you know it was very well placed so after the Tempest ultimate finished they were still stunned because of it right and then eventually killed them so again just good patience there by Probus setting a, a, again really well probably would have been kills anyways but just wanted to make sure staggering the stuns on top of one another taking a little bit of time to do so and as a result of that they get the double tap kill but also get the tower kill so big boost right there coming out as a team for Pikachu once again nearly a 2,000 gold lead as well as a 1,300 experience lead. So, yeah, no doubt a big mark right there happening for our Legion team. But this goes back to Flansmeister here on Forsaken Archer. You really stressed it. He is having a phenomenal game here for, for uh, 15, and no doubt really the guy keeping them in only nine and a half minutes in. Uh, you could argue even giving them a solid chance here. I mean, the fact that – what did he buy? Did he buy a Blessed Orb, I'm guessing? Yeah, Blessed Orb is being delivered, so on his way to – well, you would think maybe uh, Geometer's Bane, but we'll see. I guess it could easily be a Null Stone as well. We'll see which route uh, Forsaken Archer decides to go, but – 72 creep kills. You compare that to anyone else in the game, the, the closest is Tempest, who's in that jungle. I guess Bubbles is actually closest at 44 creep kills. So, yeah, he is really doing a big job here for our Hellborn team. But, of course, there's the ultimate question of, is that going to be enough for 15? Again, I just think, I think substituting a jungler for another support hero, like look at Z-Freak. He's actually some action coming out in the mid lane. No, they're not able to find anybody, but here goes a hasted polywog. He wants blood. He does use the actual uh, morph onto Miraxis, but good job by Swindle using that W there, which is called with Arcane Shield, I believe. Yes, it is, uh, to mitigate that. So good job by him. So push coming out in the mid lane, but as I was talking about, Tempest, uh, I, when you put him in place of, like, say, another support hero on the team, that's basically what you're doing. You're substituting a support for a jungler. And he's level 8 with massive amounts of farm top on his, on his team. And then look at the supports. They're so gimped, and they're going to continue to be gimped. So I just think it's a smarter route drafting a jungler unless you decide to be aggressive with those supports. Sorry about that. Yeah, def definitely agree with you there uh, when it comes down to it. it again, it's just as we you mentioned that, obviously, in the early series today, again, CT Esports and Trademark Esports, similar story here with 15 versus Pikachu. I mean, it starts with that experience game, but it ju it's just it spreads out so nice. And, of course, you compare that, as you're talking about, to Glacius and Plague Rider, who are still level 5, and their farm basically is non-existent here in this game. So the fact that both of them are struggling, yeah, and you do compare that to really, you, in this case, Tempest and Empath, Clearly, that's a big benefit for Pikachu, amongst other things. So right now, a 4-1 to one hero kill lead. Again, the golden experience, definitely a solid advantage for them as well. We are only 11 and a half minutes in, though, so still fairly early on in this game. And taking a closer look at the bigger picture here, uh, you see Power Supply finished on Forsaken Archer Top. And in the meantime, Kelfield going to catch Polywag Priest in place. Will it go for a counter war trap? Oh, that would be dangerous. Yes, he went for it, but a very risky move right there. I guess he still was in the Kelfield, so he really didn't have much of a choice. Trying to sidestep these axes, but Morax is just a little bit too strong. Lands the Quakes down. In comes a wall from Empath. The SS Strength coming out and down goes Polywalk Priest. Nothing really more that he could have done right there. However, the Hellborn team instead they're going to try to counter push the middle lane while that happened and they could be successful with this. We'll see if it's going to be enough damage. Are we going to see invulnerability? Some ports perhaps? No, we are not. It's going to be a tower kill. A seal kid gets credit for the kill. So yeah, at least again, making, making the best of a bad situation really from 15, but a good gank on a Polywalk Priest nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. I think both teams got something out of that. They did use a lot of resources to, to kill that Polly, but at the same time, Polly did drop rewards. So I don't know if I really agree with that. Um, but nonetheless, they did get a kill in the mid, and for Forsaken Archer, up to 410 gold per minute. I'm kind of curious with the Blessed Orb as the first item pickup. I really do like Slix's style of picking up that Whispering Helm early. It just helps her farm so much faster. Um, 
But yeah, we'll have to see. The Blessed Orb definitely gives her the stats that she needs early on against the, the kind of burst. And now oh. actually an ultimate as well as a volley onto for uh Marax is right there. Very, very close. One more auto attack in the skeleton to finish him off. It's gonna be so damn oh. close. Oh my god! <laughs> the uh, the shield there oh, blocking man. multiple times on those skeletons. And wow, that was close. And actually He's now dead. FA is going to die. There's Tempest uh, to meet her right next to the Ancients. And Moraxis wow. gets the kill. Oh my Go figure. God. That has just got a burn. That is salt yeah. in the wound, man. That really oh. is. Oh, you see in the top one in the meantime, Empath actually in a lot of trouble. Hex, hex, hex. No! Polywog Priest could not hex her. I guess she was just uh, in the black right there with the tree, so just not able to get enough vision. And Empath barely squeaks away, but boy, oh boy, back to that middle lane. I mean, I love the obviously aggressive play by Flensmeister there, and, there, and, he, and it's uh, also in hindsight, you know, being inspecting everything, you could you could you could definitely say like, oh, he shouldn't have done it in the first place. But I, I think that was fun. But yeah, just not barely getting that kill. That's got to sting so much. And the fact that uh, to add the insult to injury, like I said, Moraxis ended up coming back in and sniping him out with the final axe right there, just well. Salt in the wound. But in the end, you know, if you're Forsaken Archer, you just let it go, really, and you come back to your own game, which is just being farm, farm, farming machine. I, I do agree with you definitely what you are saying earlier, though, with Slicks on Forsaken Archer and the route that he likes to go with the Whispering Helm. It just helps him enhance it so much more. You do like it at, at the case of Forsaken Archer is going, you know, Blessed Orb, some solid stats, and perhaps, you know, that is to say if she does get involved with some team fights, that, that could be for the better. Uh, but if you are just going to be a pure farming machine, you know, maybe it does make more sense to go for an item like a Whispering Helm. You know, we prefer that with Madman in the Orange Complexity series. But at the bottom lane, Pebbles will get picked off. As you see, uh, Empath actually going inside of Bubbles right there. The Calpfield kept him in place. And Silhouette, obviously, there, in fact, gets credit for the kill when it's all said and done. So it seems like uh, overall picture continuing to look better and better here for Pikachu. Uh, Pebbles did purchase his portal key right before he oh, died. Wow. So okay. a, a really good job by him. If he had not, that would have set him back down to, like, I want to say something like 1,700, 1,800 gold. So um, that, that was huge right there. They can still get some good pickoffs with the Pebbles onto multiple heroes uh, uh, on, the, on the Legion side. So mm -hmm. that, that's a good thing for him, but nonetheless, good kill on Pebbles. Yeah, so that, that is the good news. But having a portal key will be, of course, huge here for the Hellborn team. And a, another step in the right direction for making an earlier on comeback in this game. And I want to go back to Forsaken Archer once again real quickly. He did go the Life Tube, so it is not going to be Geometer's Bane. It looks like it is going to be the uh, the Nullstone route. He's cleaning up Ancients right here. And he, in fact, will be able to finish the sustain there and then well on his way to the recipe. What do you make of a Nullstone pickup here for Forsaken? Uh, oh. At first, uh, what was their action? Well, sorry, top lane, there's very possible action. You see, again, he just purchased that portal key. They don't know he has it yet. I don't believe so. Morax is uh, playing very passive, though, expecting something up, and I think he should be fine in the end. So, Yeah, it's going to be close. If Polywog can maybe, I think maybe towards this would be fine, and then just have Pebbles and get ready. But Polywog's just going to auto attack this. Uh, do they have TPs up on anyone else? Silhouette does not. Empath does not. Bubbles has one. He's going to pour it in right now. So here we go. Here we go. Pebbles is ready, though. Bubbles will shell surf. There's a stalagmite hitting. He jumps in on a Tempest, but at what cost right here? Pebbles not going to get turned on. The Quake Stun calls out. Morax's ultimate, and down goes Pebbles. You see the Kelpin in the background. The wars were on the heroes the whole time as well, so the tower will also be denied on top of that. It seemed like, I mean, yeah, that just uh, could not have gone really any worse for 15 <laughs> right there. Also, at the same time, good reaction from Pikachu, and they played that fairly well themselves. That was just kind of like some awkward communication. I mean, Pebbles went in and, and didn't really combo, and they didn't really decide what they wanted to do. They didn't want to, like, are we going to back? Are we going to go? Some, yeah. You know, some just uh, unfortunate miscommunication right there. Empath does use her ultimate <laughs> onto uh, Bubbles right there. Again, seems onto to Bubbles. Be, yeah, seems to be that player or hero of choice, I guess, for uh, who's playing that? TPS Priceless. Really likes this Buch. Buch, the Buch player. Well, saying that name. He's been around for a while, obviously a fantastic con player on the competitive scene, and I'm sure he'll be along for much, much longer. At least I hope so. But um, So anyways, going back to Forsaken Archer, though, she actually did just finish her Null Stone. Do you yeah. really like that choice? Oh, yeah, uh, I do. At first I was like, yeah, it seems kind of silly because there's not really any you know, huge, strong single-target abilities. There's maybe Tempest, Glacial Blast, maybe the Essence Link from, um, from Empath. But when you really look at the bigger picture, yes, it helps her farm, gives her mana regen. Also... You can safely assume that her Maraxis, if not also, Bubbles is going to go for Hellflower this game. Mm -hmm. So it's a fine pickup. It's a very, very good pickup. Yeah, and you see right here at the Ancients, actually, she is now going to continue to take those out. Doesn't have enough mana for ultimate, but we'll just clean them up. She does have her level 1 split fire now. Uh, so going to use that as assistance for taking out the Ancients. And again, Flensmeister, man. Now, I wasn't here to cast the series of 15 versus Complexity, but from what I heard, Flensmeister... Right. 
did a fantastic job. And even in game two, where it seemed like they were more of a trollish style, uh, he seemed like he was the one, if any, that actually was still trying and, and giving his best effort for the success of the team. And it seems like right here, you know, it makes sense. Uh, obviously, what he's doing right here, again, just being the kind of the carry for the team and doing a great job at it once again. Well, yeah. <laughs> And to quote Zet Pro, their style was we were trying to troll to get TD, or to get complexity to throw. That was their <laughs> idea. Nice. I don't know if it has uh, you know how much truth is in that statement, but yeah, he was dominating on Sandwraith. It was really fun to watch. And actually, I thought they, despite them having such a huge deficit, uh, I thought there was a slight chance because he was so farmed on Sandwraith. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was a very interesting game. Again, if you missed that, it should be on VOD on on, on yes. our Twitch page. So it was on the YouTube actually. It's on there as well ah. now too. So. Uh, definitely check it out, youtube.com slash Honcast, which we are doing our part to keep that very active as far as uh, keeping things uploaded. But bottom lane, on that note, we have a lot of action perhaps coming up right here. We got that portal key on Pebbles. He, uh, oh, I heard a portal key, but I guess uh, oh, that was probably our priest. Yeah, jumping away even. There we go with the initiative. Pebbles once again with Impact inside. The Kelfield comes out. They jump Pebbles off to the side. Pebbles will fall. There's the piercing guys. Plague is going to pass around the Tempest on the window, pulling them inside. The Plague is doing a lot of damage, but it's going to be enough for the kill. Oh, barely not enough for the kill. Everyone survives here on the Legion team, but Bubbles. And now Marax is trying to run, looking for Sagan Archer, though. A good amount of damage coming out for her. Marax is going to get torn up, a new one right here, and will eventually fall. So in the end, Hellborn team actually managed to fight pretty well right there. That Plague did so much damage for the team. It's unfortunate it didn't guarantee any kills on Silhouette and Empath or even Tempest, but it did get them to fall back in the end. And now we're going to see this tower pushed as a result. So I don't know. I think you can argue 15, especially if they get this tower kill, they could even have won that fight. I, well, I feel like Swindle kind of gave a th throwaway kill there at the end. He, his team was nowhere near him. Uh, Tempest had absolutely no HP. Th there was just some weird communication right there. That was kind of a, an, an, un, an unnecessary death. But yeah. I did want to say a, a very interesting th thing there. When the Tempest ultimate canceled Forsaken Archer's uh, uh, ultimate as well, the Skeleton Kings, or the, why did I say Skeleton Kings, but the Skeletons from Forsaken Archer were still attacking Bubbles oh. during the channel, which was wow. really interesting. And it actually killed uh, Bubbles. And then <laughs> Empath popped out of him, of course. But that was a really funny mechanic that I did not know happened. Yeah, so sure, yeah, I, that, I would have uh, not thought of that either. That's very interesting. So, what, I mean, again, what do you think? The fact they got the tower kill on top, could you argue that 15 won that fight in the end? I think they did because the Tempest ultimate was also used, so that's yeah. a, that's on cooldown. Um, now, the only thing is, yes, uh, did, did Silhouette didn't, no, she did not die. She barely so that's, lived. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very important. Had she died, it would have been a definite victory for Hellborn. But nonetheless, um, they're still doing good. I mean, that Plague Ultimate, as you mentioned, Zed Pro, Sweet Pro here, uh, that did so much damage. It mm -hmm. bounced perfectly amongst all the heroes. Uh, the, the only thing I worry here for the Hellborn is that Pebbles is getting no farm. I mean, yes, he's got his portal key, that's standard, but he needs more. He really does. He's 0 4 0. He's 0 4 0. <laughs> yep. So having the portal key, you know, that's great. But as we as we always say, if you're not getting assists or the, uh, the or kills at the very least assists with it, what use is it to you? The, I mean, it, literally, it, it d provides zero stats. And the purpose of the item, in most cases at least, is to allow you to jump in and get at the, at the very least, like I said, at least assist for some kills. The fact that he's 0 4 0, and he's had that portal key for now five six minutes here. Yeah, that is pr pretty bad news for uh, 15 and Bassett's, of course, playing that pebble. It's not that it's 100% his fault by any means, but, again, definitely a point worth making. But we did see Polywalk Priest also having that portal key, so the fact that they have two portal keys to work with now is very good news. To see Pebbles actually getting low, but look at Polywalk Priest. He comes and he's like, oh, you need help, guys? Here, I'll electric jolt that and take all three from you. No big deal. Yeah, a little oh, bit man. of an uh, interesting situation there. I'm sure Pebbles would have gladly liked that, but hey. Yeah, at least somebody <laughs> on the team got the farm, right? It's just funny because he spent the whole time and got so close to death and was using all that time to kill him. And Paul's like, do, 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 just jolts them all. That was kind of comical. That's like your pub moment, typical pub moment. You're doing all the work to get all the kills, and then all of a sudden he just comes in. Kill steal, thank you. But, yo, know, actually, uh, Hellborn is closing the gap. Uh, they're actually leading wow, in gold, yeah. believe it or not, and experience is not too far in favor for uh, for Team Pikachu. Uh, but uh, signs of uh, good things happening for Team Pikachu now that uh, I mentioned it, is that the portal key is picked up on Moraxis. So that is such a strong initiation tool. That's the initi initiation tool that they need, coupled with the portal key from Bubbles. Now, uh, Tempest did not decide to go for an early portal key. He went for a, a Tablet of Command. That's kind of interesting. Again, this seems to be Z-Freak, though. Yeah, more so than not, on Z-Freak specifically, I see this build. He, 
I've even seen something like Helm of the Black Legion on it early on. I've seen him go for straight into Shrunken Heads, into Tablets, you know, completely pass up Portal Keys. So, seems like something they just prefers to do. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Bubbles will fall right there. Those are the Portal Keys coming into play. But at what cost right here? Empath will jump into Moraxes. They're going to chase not enough mana on Moraxes, though, for anything more. In fact, he's going to get a tongue tied to Locked in. He does have the ulti activated. There goes exploding. Minimal damage, though. Pebbles, another check in the air. Moraxes, though, still well alive. A kill happening in the background on the Polywalk Priest. And now Pebbles trying to get away. But there's a plug and only bounce to one. So the tablet forward and does not bounce after that so very good getaway in the end from the legion team and it ends up only being a one for one exchange now while that was happening uh, forsaken archer nearly gets the top tower it is going to go down wow. in favor of the hellborn team so again you could safely say honestly that 15 won that fight yep. when it's all said and done because of that tower kill oh they absolutely did win it they got a they got a bubbles for a polywog and right now bubbles in my opinion was doing a little bit better i'm surprised actually polywog's farm has bounced back he's doing despite him being one five and two yeah compare that to bubbles who who won the lane got ganks is actually trailing in gold per minute. I mean, uh, FedEx for the win is at 290, basically, after dying even. Bubbles is at only 245. Uh, other thing to note is Empath keeps going into Bubbles. I don't know I if to bring this, that up, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if this is really what you want. Now, he did, I believe, actually, he went More into Marax that, that time, time, which is, I think, a much smarter route. Uh, I love seeing Empath and Tanky Heroes um, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. What about Silhouette? Later game, in the okay. later stages, definitely Silhouette. Definitely when por uh, a Portal Key is purchased on Silhouette, should Empath be in that um, Silhouette. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, so as we saw the last fight again, she wasn't Moraxis, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that, you know, see what she does. Speaking of Portal Key on Silhouette, she doesn't have it yet, but she does have the Null Stone, which she just finished, actually, I believe, so uh, possibly on her way to Portal Key, but oh my god, I mean, compare that to Forsaken Archer, she's oh. already had her Null Stone, and she just finished uh, Geometer's Bane. Uh, this farm is just getting wow. ridiculous what? here on Flensmeister, 530 gold per minute. And it is just not slowing down. So again, Flensmeister deserving so much credit. And he's level 16, by the way. Three levels higher than anyone else. Oh. Warchamp at the bottom lane on Moraxis. Locking him down, and Moraxis will fall when it's all said and done. Counter coming out for the Legion team, though. Kale figure to come. Look at all the ports immediately coming out from the Hellboy side. Pebbles will be... Oh, Plaguebiter stuttered at the last second. He will be fine in the end, though. As Okay, no, he was stunned, that's why. So yeah, he's going to port out as well. And... It's all good. They got the kill. They got out. That's exactly what we need. And, oh, by the way, again, Forsaken Archer pushing the middle lane while that's happening. So, exactly. You, you talked about it. Now it's a 3,000 gold lead all of a sudden for 15. Sure, the experience lead's still in favor of Pikachu, but it's even gone down by so much here. This could be really scary, though. Forsaken Archer is, has been really ballsy here, farming the Ancients of the enemy team, and he actually walked right by a ward that TPS Prices has a ward right there at the top room where that haste is. I feel like if they actually capitalize on him, they could have got a kill, but he's being really ballsy. He's going <laughs> to get that entire stack yeah. and maybe even get the haste rune and run out. No, he doesn't see the haste rune. Anyway, that is, yeah, I mean, they're winning these fights without Forsaken Archer right now, and she is farming way over Probusk on this silhouette right now. A full Geometer's Bane and then some mm -hmm. above this silhouette. Yeah, damage star pulling that up is kind of interesting, but actually Bubbles is overall in the lead at 19%, but Polywalk Priest is right up there as well yeah. at 18%, and then it drops off quite a bit for both sides, really. So those are the stars of the game right now when it comes to hero damage, at least. Uh, but y yeah, you can imagine, you talked about Forsaken Archer really hasn't been there for all these fights by any means, Sh and she's still dealing 9% of the overall damage, which actually is a pretty solid amount. You can just consider now with all these items that she has and <laughs> with her starting to be involved, how much higher that's going to start getting. Uh, so, you know, you could argue the same thing for Silhouette, though, on the Legion side, so... Uh, but again, she is so far behind Forsaken Archer, it's not even funny. I mean, she's more than 200, really 230, 240 gold per minute behind <laughs> Forsaken Archer. That is just ridiculous, Two, 26, minute, 26 minutes into the game, so... Yep. Big, big plays here coming out from Flensmeister. We do see a jump onto an Illusion Polywog Priest. <laughs> and I'm sure Swindon Melons feels a little bit silly after that, but again, it's a lot easier for us as a spectator to see that, but... Yeah. Unfortunate for them. And Silhouette actually is opting out of uh, going for that portal key. Uh, just bought a Mighty Blade right now, so going to go for maybe a Shrunken Head early on, or maybe even something different, maybe even a Frostbird. I'm not quite sure, but I really think uh, portal key is standard. Almost as standard to say like a portal key on Magmus or something. It's just that good yeah. on Silhouette. Even despite that, I guess you could even see nerf with the back Th end. That is the most annoying nerf, <laughs> i got to say, because it, it definitely reduces the fun factor of Silhouette. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a needed nerf. But yeah. Uh, no, it, it's, it still definitely needs to be picked up. And here's a Concord attempt. They have Nothing. massive amounts of sentries and or, uh, wards of revelation as well as wards of sighted out around here. I don't think uh, Pika has a clue. Yeah. They even dropped the wards from Polywog, so this is going to die for sure. Now they have a clue right here, and they're like, well, shit, that sucks. Yeah, Congor kill coming out for Hellborn team, and 
Lo and behold, Forsaken Archer, the one to pick up the token alive. 2,500 gold more saved up. He's going to clean up what's only a single stacked Ancients, but still, it's Ancients, and he'll be nearly 3,000 gold after he is finished with this. So there we go, 2868 and counting. He's well on his way to his next big item, which at this rate, oh, that's actually going to be a Blessed Orb pickup. So I was going to say, you know, maybe something like a Savage Mace, but man, that's his third Blessed Orb when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> he got with an Old Stone, got with the Geometer's Bane, and now he's going to be, I guess, Frost of Skull. That really just makes the most sense here, unless I'm missing something sheep obvious. Stick. But, or duh. Maybe sheep stick. Yeah, duh. Um, it did get buffed. Three seconds now instead of 2.5, so right. maybe. No, but probably not. Um... God, he is farmed. 567 gold per minute. And again, they have a token of life now, so, you know, when will that start coming into play? We'll keep an eye out for. You go back, though, to this Pebble specifically. He's still only 1, 4, and 1. But I still feel like 15 right now is in actually a very good spot because of Forsaken Archer mainly. But. Oh, yeah. Pebble has picked up a little bit of farm as well. Uh, did get that bulwark, and that they really do need that. Polywog is shaping up to get a very, very uh, quick uh, shrunken head right now. Very, very close. About, I want to say 600 away, and he'll have that. Other items to be picked up. Let's see, nothing too much. Oh, yeah, I did want to mention this. The barrier is actually picked up on Tempest. Oh, that's so big, yeah. So that's good for, for pushing, but I really feel like, why opt out of the portal key? I just feel like it's so good on Tempest here. Now, yes, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of stuns and things that can cancel it, but if you if you just straight up one g this game decide, I'm going to go for farming Tempest, I'm going to get Shrunken Head, Portal Key, and a Null Stone to cancel out the, the ultimate from Plague Rider. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can stop you. Well, you can argue, if he went for the Portal Key and then the Shrunken Head next, I don't know the exact math with those items, but you got to think it would be pretty damn close to having yep. that combination exactly. by now instead of the Tablet Bariata. He is the top farmer on the team at 341 gold per minute. So, yeah, you're right. The fact that he could have those two items Instead of the Barry Auto Tablet of Command for this situation, it just seems like that would have just been that much more beneficial for the team. But, that, you know, that's not to put the blame by any mean on Z Freak, because as a team, you know, things just aren't looking the greatest. And you do look at Silhouette right now. Being played by Pro Busk, he hasn't had the most impressive time, honestly, when it comes to his farm. The fact that he's still only sitting at 327 gold per minute is a little bit disturbing for this Legion team. Now, he did go the Null Stone first. He talked about the Mighty Blade, perhaps that Shrunken Head pick up next, but. He is falling so far behind this Forsaken Archer. It just it continues to get ridiculous here. It's funny that I, I criticize. Well, I didn't really. Cri I guess I shouldn't say criticize, but it's funny that I mentioned that I think that the Whispering Helm does better for yeah. Forsaken Archer early on to farm faster. Well, he's put making me put my words in my mouth. <laughs> like he is farming so fast. He's almost literally double the the silhouette. Yeah, it, it's scary how fast he's farming. Yeah. And uh, he's got to be close to Roswell <laughs> Skull soon. I mean, this is kind of crazy how fast he's farming. But yeah. Anyway, I. I yeah, Dev, I'm not putting the blame on Tempest at all. I just think that it's much more optimal to have a Shrunken Head, Null Stone. Even, even with the fact, well, even if I get Shrunken Head, Trophy, he can still cancel it with, with Plague Ulti. But all you have to do is just get Plague in your ulti. And yeah. then there's still nothing that can cancel it. Yeah. So um, I, I still like, think that uh, that is the most optimal way to build a Tempest, especially in this situation. Exactly. And, but, you know, what's done is done. He does go a Bound Eye as well, actually. And, you know, definitely a beneficial item for, for a team overall, but it keeps going back to, you know, he, he doesn't have the Portal Key at the very least still, let alone the Shrunken Head Portal Key combination. And that combination is not going to be happening for a long time. So, you know, we've definitely made our points in that. And what's done is done, I, I guess. But we've been in now a very passive game here. I mean, you look at the you look at the 12 to 5 hero kill advantage in favor of Pikachu, and you would think that they're in a fairly good spot, but obviously there's a lot more stats that are on the table than just that. Mm -hmm. And it clearly shows you why you should be uh, thinking that 15 is definitely in the better spot right now. I mean, you got a shrunken head finish on FedEx for the – you talked about this earlier, Polywalk Priest, FedEx for the win. You know, he had a he had a solid start, but obviously those two kills that happened because of Tempest being in the jungle really started to screw him, and he slowed down. But he has definitely – uh, you know, kept it a very, very consistent game, and he's recovered even to an extent. And again, the farm that he you talked about Pebbles, he's got the Souls Bulwark, another 1,700 gold saved up. So this is definitely a pace of a game right now that despite having aggressive Portal Key heroes like Polywog, like Pebbles, they're fine with not being crazy aggressive with getting all these kills. They got a Forsaken Archer that is just insanely farmed. She's got her Ice Brand on her, but we know that she has at least has a Blessed Orb. On top of maybe even the Glowstone. I guess she might still need to purchase that. But anyway, some split pushing going on. We see they're going to push the bottom lane. In the meantime, the single, the first tower on the middle lane being pushed. But this is, of course, a big time favor for 15. And in fact, Pikachu, I wouldn't be surprised if they start porting back soon because it's not a race that they're going to win. In fact, there we go. They port back, and 15 will be fine retreating themselves. Yeah, it doesn't look like they want to concede the token right now. The token does have 
Another two minutes on it, but I honestly don't think that they're going to be even be able to use it. Unless they go mid right now as five. Don't go anywhere else. Just march up mid, get that last tower. That might be the smartest decision, but I see a lot of shuffling around. Polywog's going down here. Maybe to pick up a, uh, a, a homecoming stone. Does have his, her shrunken head, by the way. Uh, but yeah. They're marching mid. We'll see what they do. If they don't use this uh, token uh, up, I imagine they'll just wait passively for another three minutes after it's done <laughs> and just wait for the next uh, uh, Congor kill. Um, especially when Forsaken Archer is so close to so that Frost will skull. I'm pretty sure that she has it after this. Um, of course, yes, I don't know she for does. sure. She had the glowstone, so yeah, okay. she's just, yep. just the pattern. So now. Frost will skull. God, that, she's going to be so tanky. And, and she's level 20, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's four levels higher than anyone in this game. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, it's it's cra not even that. It's just the fact that it's tw you're level 20 at 30 minutes, basically. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. But anyway, uh, there is an Invis Tempest here. Who is in the mid? I don't know if there's any. There are some revelations on to actually three, and uh, maybe oh, they knew that they picked them up. There's one placed, and uh, yeah, but we'll have to see what ha makes what happens with this. But here's the thing: as long as they have one person waiting to cancel that Tempest ultimate, yeah. Tempest is going to have a very very difficult time trying to initiate these team fights. Yeah. So Forsaken Archer, he's ballsy right now. He does have 40 seconds left on the token of life. He doesn't care about getting initiated on at this point. And not only haven't, but he has 2,500 life. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so I good luck even killing him, as well as 19.72 armor. Not even the plague armor on him, so that's just ridiculous. They easily take out the tower. Pikachu just basically concedes it. I mean, uh, I guess really when you think about it, there wasn't too much that they could have done. They're basically fighting at this point for their base and not much else. So, again, 15 playing this very, very patient. They're not going to rush anything. They're going to fall back, and as you stated, probably going to wait for another token of life at this point is what would make the most sense here. The token of life is going to wear off in another five seconds. So about three minutes from now. So that'll put us at about 37 minutes. Try to keep that in mind. Uh, Congor will be coming back up, and we'll be good to go with another possible Congor fight, which I'm sure will be epic, as it usually seems to be, especially in games like this. So take another look at Pro Busk here on Silhouette. What is this GPM at? 372. Again, it's okay, but <laughs> in comparison, the 600? fact that he's down by 220 gold per minute, <laughs> Nearly 600 GPM farming on Forsaken Archer is just, it's not looking good in that sense. So, he is level 16 though, he's got his okay farm, and he is working towards his next big item, which he did finish his shrunken head by the way, so, he's got that now at least, but man, we have not had a fight for a good 15 minutes it seems like. And just continues to be looking better and better for the Hellborn team. Now, I will say overall, I mean, it is Forsaken Archer that's really amplifying this Hellborn team, but you look at after that, I mean, Yes, Polywalk and Pebbles are doing solid. I mean, when you compare it to the Legion team as a team, though, it's not like it's taken off as a team. So it really is just that Forsaken Archer in that sense, but still, that is scary. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it, it could still be it could still be okay for Team Pikachu, especially with Empath. I mean, Empath inside Silhouette. I really, really do hope that Silhouette does get a portal key. I, I really think that's what she needs. Mm -hmm. I really think that's what this whole team needs, is this massive amount of initiation. They have the portal key on Bubbles, as well as on Miraxis. I think they, they can just keep going, get portal keys on everybody, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Empath doesn't need one, she can just jump into somebody. If, if Tempest gets one as well, that means everybody can blink in and just const and just initiate, bam, right in their face. Yeah. So, um, I, I, ho I really do hope that's the route he goes, but He's hoarding up another 2,600, and I feel like if he wanted to buy it, he would have bought it already, so I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's uh, I agree with you. I mean, granted, there is a possible team fight coming up, so at this point, too, you know, maybe saving up for right. a buyback yep, is sure. uh, kind of important. But as we talked about, 37-minute mark around there, that's when Congor is going to be resurrecting. So I, 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 I'm pretty sure 15 is very aware of that as well, and they're not going to really commit to much until that actually happens. So Forsaken Archer, talking about gold saved up, he already has another 2,600 gold saved up. I, I think at this point, you know, something like a Savage Mace really just raw damage makes a lot of sense here mm -hmm. coming out for this uh, team, let alone for second Archer. Now the Legion team getting a little bit aggressive here. Swinomel is trying to find an opportunity to jump in, but the Hellmore team, again, they just retreated too quickly and not going to give that to them. Demonic Breastplate has been finished, by the way, on Pebbles. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you talk about his recovery and farm, just how impressive that's been. So just another dangerous item that they're going to have to deal with. Oh, man, again, again, this game just continues to be looking better and better now for 15 as it progresses on. But it still really is. I mean, it's still close enough that it really is just going to be this next upcoming fight that you feel it's going to be happening soon. That's going to determine so much. I mean, sure, there's a lead here for 15, but by all means, Pikachu has a good chance of himself. And, you know, it does start with a Tempest, and they have great team follow-up, but <laughs> it kind of does go back to the fact that, again, Tempest doesn't have a portal key himself. But speaking of no portal key, Silhouette passes up the portal key, to go for what was, a, I'm guessing, a level one shield breaker. 
as it's being delivered right now. So he's just going to go for more just raw damage himself, too. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what I think uh, Hellborn is missing here? They're missing an Energizer. Yes. I really need to see an Energizer. That should be up. the next item on Forsaken Archer. On Probably anybody. <laughs> Plague, uh, Polly, Pebbles, go for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty solid here. I'm not even trolling, man. I think no, that it is. Good. At this point of the game, you know, when really, I agree with you. I mean, why the hell not? It, it seems like more that buff that happened to it. I know that you, you said it, so, it still needs some more changes, but it, it was a buff that clearly caught the attention of a lot of the competitive mm -hmm. scene, and we've seen it quite often, actually, as a result of that. But here we go. This is that conger attempt that we're talking about. Uh, we do see Pikachu, you know, of course, they, they're definitely aware that it's going on. We see Bubble Shell Surf kind of scudding it out. Pebbles, okay, they hit support a key by him, so... Almost thought he jumped in himself, but they're going to send him some illusions as Silhouette does put it with the illusion. Here we go, the point of precept in the background, puts a war trap down on a Tempest. The initiation has begun. Tempest will fall right off the bat, so very good start here for the Hellboy team. Bound Ice on the ground, Silhouette with Empath inside, trying to do now, but look at Forsaken Archer. So much damage coming out. Down goes Moraxis. Silhouette now the focus fire here. She will fall easily after, so will Empath. And Bubbles is just going to have to run away. Tempest did buy back, but will it be enough? Now, three heroes are dead. Glacius, Plague Rider, and Polywalk Priest on the Hellboy side. But Forsaken Archer is still full strength, man. And Pebbles yeah. at about half-life. So I believe that this is going to be a conger kill now. And 15 has, has pretty solid control of this game here. Yeah, there's not. they can do nothing with that buyback from Tempest. That was just completely wasted gold. If maybe Swindle bought back immediately as, as well, they could maybe try to contest it. But like you said, Forsaken Archer, full HP after that fight. Pretty ridiculous, uh, if I must say, but really good job starting out that fight from FedEx for the win. Finding the most important that they had to kill, which was the Tempest. Got the Ward Trap, you know, he did push poke himself out, but it didn't matter. Too much damage coming onto him, and he died quite instantly right after that. Yeah. So a uh, really good job from Polly starting up that fight, and then Flensmeister just doing so much damage to everybody with his auto attacks, with everything actually, his, his volley, his ultimate. Um, yeah, they just cleaned up. They just cleaned up. Yeah, you just saw blue streaks just flying through the air because of the split shot uh, for uh, Frost of Skull ability, and I believe she had, of course, the geometers being used, so they were just flying all over the place. She did just straight up purchase the Savage Maze, so that yeah. has now been delivered. She traded that for a power supply. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Uh, <laughs> she has a token of life that she's sitting on for now, six and a half minutes still remaining. Man, oh man, is Pikachu finding themselves in a very, very deep hole here. And you look at the overall stats, and that doesn't necessarily reflect it. I mean, sure, it is a solid lead. 11,000 goal lead, 7,800 experience lead. By all means, a solid lead here for 15. But I don't think that's, uh, you know, that really shows where, how far ahead of 15 actually is. Because I think a lot of it has to do with, again, Forsaken Archer, a lot of it when it comes to the overall farm and levels. But... Still, this is a hard carry for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is what they do. <laughs> and uh, even if it's just him alone, you know, it's definitely more than enough, it seems like. But Pikachu, of course, they're still going to fight as they should by all means. They're going to counter push this top lane in the meantime. And they're going to get a first tower out of it. But you see the bottom lane, a little bit of a push going on from 15. Again, how far are they going to go, though? They do they're, got the token of life. They're all in. I mean, they yeah. already canceled one port. FA doesn't have a port, so they're all in okay. right down here. And I think they're, they're fine. They have so much damage on the Forsaken Archer as well as that token. And uh, now Tempest does have an ultimate. But again, it's, this is going to be so hard to initiate with just a push book. Or a tablet of command, I should say. So Now Forsaken Archer just attacking from the low ground. That's the beauty <laughs> of having a, a Savage Mace. Yeah. And here's the action. Well, here we go. Again, she does have a token of life. So as long as she doesn't necessarily need to panic right here. Will the Helper team win? Will they respond? So there we go with the kill. But the need is quite a bit, including a shrunken on a silhouette. So here's the Helper team down. They chucks Moraxis <laughs> back to the team. In comes Forsaken Archer. Mor and now Pebbles in a lot of trouble. But look at Moraxis just drop right there. Polywire Priest in the background. Jumping on the silhouette. But silhouette with Empath inside. Destroys Polywire Priest, actually. So good Buy counter back. coming out. Buyback coming out right there from Moraxis, jumps back in, and this is actually looking pretty solid here for Pikachu, they're getting them on the run, Glacius now getting picked off, and Glacius falls quickly after that play, but it doesn't, oh yes, it does bounce actually, a little good amount of damage, oh, the piercing arrow's on top, and once again, Moraxis just gets disintegrated right there, we see the split shot doing work, down goes Tempest, Silhouette's gonna get caught as well, and Forsaken Archer has a freaking right click, auto attack turret right now, Bubbles will barely portal kill away, and it looks like he'll survive with Empath, but the damage is already done, speaking of buybacks, holy buyback, Batman, we have more buybacks on the Legion team. Polyboy Priest and Pebbles buyback themselves. And this Towers and these Racks here are no doubt going to fall. Now they can even take mid as well. Uh, they know that Swindle cannot buy out. Uh, I don't know if they know that Silhouette can't, but regardless, uh, I feel like she would have bought back already. 
Yeah. And yeah, I, the Tempest Ultimate still wasn't used. It, it's just so hard to get it done. Actually, it was it used. Was it, used it, it was there used at the very end. Immediately, yeah. But I think I actually think that the Savage Mace proc canceled it in midair. Yeah. When uh, after she ulted it, I, I'm not quite sure, but it just I, either way, nothing happened with that, and that's unfortunate. But this is pretty much a, a, an over game. They're gonna get. They already got the mid racks. They got the bottom racks, and there's the vote to concede. GG, well played. So good job by Team 15. They will take Game One in this best of three series, yeah. and they're one step closer from uh, battling through this uh, losers bracket. Yeah, I know it's a team game when it's all said and done, but <laughs> if there's ever an obvious MVP in a series in a match, at least I mean, <laughs> yeah. Flensmeister, no doubt. MVP this game for 15. It was just ridiculous the amount of farm he continued to get for the team, and. Big, big reason for their success. I mean, sure, in the end, obviously, it is a team effort when it's all said and done. You got some solid initiation from Polywalk and Pebbles. You got some great team support. But uh, you, you want to see a game where it's truly a hard carry taking over and doing things for your team. I think this is definitely a case of that. Flint's Meister on Forsaken Archer. Fantastic job. So for Pikachu, man, I mean, they had their moments too. But just on, I mean, what do you think? Was this just better play from 15? Or did Pikachu just really miss out on some opportunities here? I think it was better play, honestly. I, I liked Pikachu's draft better. I really did. Yeah. Uh, and, and Z Freak was ganking well at the beginning. They were taking, uh, you know, advantage of the fact that Polywog was in a very susceptible position. It's very easy. It's actually quite easy to gank for bubbles when you when it's a you know, a squishy hero like Polywog that he's going up against. So maybe yeah. even a Hag or something like that that we see in the short lane quite often. So yeah, they, they played it correctly in the beginning, but just. It, they just got too much. Fun. Honestly, I, I don't even know how he did it, but he just got too much farm <laughs> on FA. Yeah. And they took over. They uh, they had some some in interesting fights, and uh, and but also you, you know you did mention good MVP to Flensmeister, but the supporting cast stacking the jungle for him, oh, stacking yeah. the ancients for him. Also, FedEx for the win, playing a, a good pog despite the the slow start he had in the beginning. Played uh you know initiated when he needed to, needed to so. Good job all around, but yeah, again, Flans Meister really carried that game. Yeah, 450 creep kills. I'm looking closer now. You credit the silhouette at 278. I mean, not even not even in the same realm there for as far as creep kill goes. But anyways, whatever the reasons are, whatever you think they are, 15 is victorious. That is fact. And they are now up one game to nothing here in this best at a three. So, man, Pikachu, they lose in the first round of Orange, uh, two games to nothing. I, I myself, and I'm sure a lot of people out there were very surprised by that. Here they are in the loser's bracket first round elimination match. And they're now down to one game to nothing against 15. So this is definitely surprising a lot of people, I'm sure. Will Pikachu be able to come back, or will 15 win and uh, face off against TT Esports in the following round here in the Losers Bracket? Stay tuned, guys. Game 2 is going to be coming up shortly.